Hello, I got a simple tutorial for you today. This is for beginners, and I'm going to teach you how to control the camera using WASD or the arrow keys. Uh, there are various character controllers included in Unity, but none of them are simple camera controllers. So I've got this little prototype I've created, and I can't move the camera. I need to be able to move the camera, so we're going to go ahead and do that. To do this, you'll need to create a script. I'm going to be creating it in C-sharp, and I recommend you do the same, but you can do this in JavaScript. Same basic idea. We're going to call it the cam control script, and uh, we're going to drag it over onto the camera. So if we look at the main camera, it's got all the default stuff that it's got on it, and then it's got our script at the bottom. If you double-click on that, MonoDevelop should open up. And here is our cam control. You won't have these other files. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that WASD moves our camera. WASD and the arrow keys automatically map to Unity's uh, uh, input axes. And that's really, really useful for us because the player can customize those at launch time. If you've ever launched a Unity game with a default launcher, you can actually click on the Options button and it will let you remap all of the input keys. So if, for example, you're using a Japanese keyboard or something, you wouldn't have to rely on it being WASD. You could remap it to whatever keys happen to be useful to you. So that's much better than, you know, get key stuff. You don't have to worry about the exact keys in use. So we're going to just create some uh, some variables to store those. There we go. Now those will actually change as we press WASD. Uh, and I can show you that by simply doing debug.log ors plus plus vert. So if we go back into this game and I go over to the console and I press play. Oh well. Press up. Press down. See it running. Press right. Press left. Now if you're wondering about customizing this with more axes, that's very easy to do. You just go into edit project settings input and you can see how it pops up I have inspectors in both of my windows uh, they're the same but it pops up with a whole bunch of axes and we're using horizontal left right AD and vertical down up but you've also got a whole bunch of other pre-mapped ones like fire 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 jump mouse X scroll wheel horizontal vertical again uh, for I presume a joystick but either way um, you've got a lot of these pre-mapped axes so feel free to use them and you can use them for things like getting when the camera getting when the character shoots or jumps and stuff like that you don't have to do any kind of get key stuff that would be annoying so don't do it like that anyhow moving it well all of our game objects come with a transform so we just say transform dot and now we have access to the exact coordinates so we say transform dot position plus equals and then we can say uh, vector3.up times vert. Easy enough, right? But if we do that, we will find that the movement is very, very rapid, super fast. Now, that's because this executes very, very fast. It executes at whatever your frame rate is. So generally, you're going to want to multiply this by time.delta time. And that will always contain the amount of time between last frame and this frame. So now, when we hit play, you can see that it's much more smooth and controllable. But that's just the vertical axis. We also want to control the horizontal axis. The easiest way to do that is to make sure that it's within the same parentheses so that we multiply by time dot delta time at the end. And then we can say plus vector 3 dot right times hors. And when we hit play here, we can now control up, down, left, right, and all that jazz. Very straightforward, very simple. Let's go ahead and make it just a little bit more complex by doing um, public float speed equals one. Now if we do this, then if we go over into scene view and we select our main camera, over here in the inspector we can see that it now has a speed. And we can set this to say five. Now when we hit, when we hit play, oh, am I on? Did I forget to multiply it? I forgot to actually add in the multiplier. 
Mm -hmm. We're multiplying it by speed as well as delta time. So now, when we hit play, there, now it goes five times as fast. And if we lower that, even here in play mode, we can make it so that it goes slower. And we can change that to say 0.1, and it'll just crawl. Now one thing to remember is if you do change stuff in play mode, it will not be changed when you end play mode, unless it's editing a prefab directly. So in general, uh, changing things in play mode is something you only do if you want to test stuff out. The reason that my play mode is this ugly orange color is because I always forget that. So I set it up to be this ugly orange color so that I wouldn't be able to... I would always be able to tell that we were in play mode. <laughs> Anyhow, that's the easiest way to make the cameras work. And, uh, and you can do a whole bunch of other stuff with this. For example, uh, we can get the uh, float mouse wheel equals input dot get axis mouse scroll wheel well like this I think that's how it's spelled I don't think the W is capitalized maybe it is I think it might be well easy way to check edit project settings input axes mouse scroll wheel ah it is see double capitals so now we have mouse scroll wheel and now we have the mouse scroll wheel option we can say if mouse wheel does not equal zero then they've scrolled the mouse wheel now the mouse wheel isn't like uh, holding up or down or left or right because it doesn't have something that when we, when we hold right then the axis goes to one and it stays there but when we move the mouse wheel it just clicks once so it, it's time independent um, so we want to move a specific amount when we move the mouse wheel uh, rather than multiplying it by time dot delta time since the mouse wheel is outside of time it's like a click it doesn't care how much time is passing uh, so to do that we have to decide first what we want to change now normally you would do something like uh, transform dot position plus equals vector three dot back times whatever but our camera is actually an orthogra orthographic camera uh, the orthographic cameras um, have this have this sort of casting. So if we were to change it from if we were to change it from orthographic to perspective, you can see the difference. But since we're doing a 2D game, I'm not using the 2D engine, but I'm using a 2D game. The orthographic lets me stack stuff without the stuff in front looking bigger. But that also means that if I drag it back and forward, you can't see any difference, uh, unless I drag it so far forward that you, you actually go past what we're looking at. So in order for me to actually make it so that we see more or less, I have to change the camera's, uh, uh, I have to change the camera's size. So if you look down in the lower, I'll well, change it over to the game here. This is the game view. And if I change the size to 2, you can see how we can see a lot more. So we'll be editing the games. We'll be editing the camera's size. So camera is just like transform. If there is a camera mono behavior on this object, then camera will point to it. There it is, orthographic size. And we can just add. Actually, want to subtract mouse wheel because mouse wheel is actually the opposite of what you think it is. So when we hit play, now we can zoom in and zoom out. See, pretty easy. So that's the uh, very simple way to build cameras, and I went ahead and explained a lot of other stuff there as well. Uh, but it's really just these, you know, six or so lines of code. It's all you really need. In fact, you only need three, really. But um, I hope this was of help to, to you if you are a beginner, and uh, that's how you do it.